we are officially starting Florida fall garden planting. Yes, as much as I have been feeling behind, and I know many of you express that you're also feeling really behind, it's okay. We still have a lot of fall to go. We haven't even technically officially started. So even if you haven't gotten going yet, or you just need more motivation to keep going because we're coming out of those hot months and it's just draining, and that's okay. Don't worry, there's not, there's a lot to do. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be planting lots of different seeds in ground. We're going to be doing um, some seeds in trays so that we can transplant some things a little bit later in the season. And then we're also going to be doing, oh, tomato cuttings, because I know some of you guys asked to actually see how I do that. Um, and probably, oh, and I need to transplant a couple plants. So we got a lot to do. So if you're looking to learn or you're just looking to hang out, either way, come along, let's get going. We've got lots to do, but it's all gonna be good and fun today because actually the weather's pretty nice. Yeah, let's go. So we got a lot of seeds starting to start today. A lot of seeds starting to start today. Yes, so for this Florida fall garden planting, we're gonna get some seeds in the ground and I've got a lot of things to start. And um, one of the things that's been stressing me the most out is because is corn. And corn has been one of my challenge children for many different reasons. It's like a new reason every year or so. So I feel like I'm kind of in the spot where this could event actually work. I've gotten rid of the pests in the area because I don't have grass anymore. And then we finally have something to stop the critters from coming in here and digging. And ever since I've had this year, um, no critter digging. So I feel like I'm in a really good spot where I can put corn kernels in and not get them dug up by animals that eat all of them. So, and the cool thing is, is that unbeknowing to myself, I must have paid attention last year when I was given the tip on which type of corn did really, really well, because I bought it. <laughs> I don't remember buying it, but as I was going through all my seed packets, I was like, this is it, peaches and cream. This was the one that they told me last year that this is the one that did really well. Now, the people, who, the, the viewers who gave me the tip said that they planted them in July. And that's why I've been really stressing out is because I've been, this is the crop that's been stressing me out the most for fall is I wanted to get these in the ground in late July so I could follow their really good advice and verify that it worked for me. And I failed. <laughs> and so I feel really bad. But I'm still gonna try it. I have two packets here, um, one full and then like one and a half. So I, I'm feeling like, yes, let's let's do this. Let's make this happen. Yes. Um, and I'm gonna flip you around. Let's look at some of the other seed packets because I, I found some ones that I wasn't planning on originally doing when we did the plan video. I think it was like a week or two ago. Um, but as I was going through the bins, I was like, oh, I didn't even remember having these. So I'm gonna throw them in and because I didn't remember having them. That means I bought them a while ago. And while seeds can go for a very, very long time, you start um, how effective each seed is, the percentage starts going down over time, right? So where like a fresh packet might have 75% that can produce a plant like a few years later, maybe only 50% or 40%. So you just know that. So I was like, well, I should start using these up because who knows? So the plan will be a little bit different than what we originally talked about. And I will be sowing in a couple of crops just because I had the seeds and I don't know that very much of it will come up because that's not what I was planning on doing. So let me flip you around. We'll talk about a little bit of this and then we'll get into um, some tips about seed sowing. Cause I know some people were asking me, you know, they struggle with putting seeds in the ground or in trays. And so I'll give you some of the couple tips that I have learned along the way. You all please do the same because I only know so much. Um, and I learn from the comments too. So help each other, teach each other what you've learned. Cause that's how I learned things like, hey, try peaches and cream. So let's turn around and look at what we're gonna do. So we are gonna be planting corn. I have a lot of packets here, hooray. Two are the peaches and cream. We're also gonna try out this jackpot that I grabbed or maybe my kids grabbed. I don't know who grabbed it, but we're gonna throw it into, I am putting in so much corn into this bed that I don't know if it doesn't make it this year, maybe I'll completely abandon it. But I no, I have hope, I have hope. I'm gonna try. So we're gonna be putting lots of corn, this bed, that's where that's going. Nothing really changing with that plan. Carrots, we're gonna go seed the carrots today in the middle bed over here. Um, I cleared it out of all the sweet potato vines and they really didn't root very well, so it should be totally fine. There's some cabbage left in there, I'll clear that out. But I'm really, um, I'll leave the cabbage in for now. I'm just gonna throw the seeds in. And once they start to take off, I will go and clear up the cabbage. But what I'm also gonna throw in there because I did not realize I still had leftover beet seeds. And I think these are like two or three years old, these packets now. 
So I figured I'm just gonna get rid of these and whatever comes up, comes up. It'll be a sunnier location than when I did them at the base of that trellis. So we'll see if we get a better germination rate. And that's what we're gonna do in that bed. Now, when it comes to tomatoes, I'm gonna be doing cuttings with you guys, but I also have a lot of seeds. So we had talked about those early treat hybrids. I still have seeds left over. So I'm gonna sow some in a tray. Um, I'm gonna sow some in the tray. So we'll do some cuttings and we'll do some seed sowing for these. And then I also found that, I guess I had large red cherry. Um, I had some yellow pears left over and I had some honeycomb hybrids. So some of these I'm gonna directly sow into the ground. Some I'll put in a tray and then we'll have lots of tomato plants and we'll see what comes up. I guess I bought this too. I buy lots of seed packets when I see them and my kids like to buy them. So. I end up with like, I have like, I don't even know how many of sunflower packets right now. My kids love sunflower seeds. <laughs> they don't love eating sunflower seeds. They just love growing sunflowers. So I ended up with a ton of different varieties. So next year we'll be having a lot more fun with that. So I ended up also with some Black Beauty eggplants. Um, our eggplants have not produced very well. And it is the time of year where I can do some more eggplants by seed. So we will try it and maybe make a couple new plants and maybe that will help freshen up the area, though we did prune these ones back a lot in the last video. This is, I'm, I'm just gonna put them in a tray. We'll make it happen. Basil, I have basil. I wanna have some more basil. As much plant basil as I plant, we rarely harvest it. We are very bad about that, <laughs> but I'm going to do it and we'll actually use it. So there you go. Um, that third raised garden bed that I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it and I kind of have put like, ah, sweet potatoes maybe? That one, I'm actually, I'm gonna throw spinach in here. I'm gonna clear out the sweet potatoes and we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the spinach seeds in. I will not clear out the sweet potatoes yet until I start seeing that these are popping up. And then um, I'll do that. So we have some of these. And then I found tomatillos. I don't honestly remember the last time I had tried to grow tomatillos. So I will, maybe if I have enough trays, I'll go and do a couple of those because we like making green salsa. So I have all of these. I also have, this is not all I've harvested, but I brought just the four out because that's all I'm gonna use, um, Puerto Rican black beans. Interestingly, they are very small compared to other black beans. I hope I harvested them at the right time, but I figured I'd throw a couple on the ground and we'll see how they do. Though actually based on what people have told me, maybe I don't wanna do that, but we'll do it and I can always kill the plant later. I'm really good at killing plants when I want to. Oh, I have got more ahise seeds. I'm debating on how much more, oh, I was gonna try to maybe start a couple of these. And I think that was it for now. I think those are the main seeds that I'm gonna be starting today. So let's first get started with those corn so I can get it out of my mind because I am really don't wanna be stressing over this anymore. So I've already gone and pulled all the weeds in the area. I do have some roselle still in here, a couple of green onions. I'll come back later and pull these once I have a game plan for green onions. And I'm gonna leave my ahise there. Um, once I get ahise pepper starts going, then I will remove this one because it's my last one that's still alive. So once that one's going, then I'll switch it all around. So right now, corn, corn, corn. Now when it comes to corn, so here's one of my tricks for, tricks, tips. So instead of always reading like how deep you're supposed to put these things, my simple trick, and it took me a while to figure this out. I used to mess up tomato seeds all the time because um, I would put them too deep. And if you've always been like, I don't know why when I put seeds in, they never come up. What I found is that um, sometimes the depth on here, especially with like little seeds, like in theory it's right. But then like when you or I are gonna do it, we probably overcompensate would be my guess. Um, or maybe it's just like too high of an estimate. I don't know what it is, but here's basically my way of dealing with most seeds. Big seeds go in usually a thumbnail to the first joint on your finger <laughs> deep. So these are things like your pumpkins, your corns, your beans. Those, the bigger they are, the deeper they can go. And the thing is, is you need to put them deep because this is I think where people make mistakes with big seeds is they plant them on top. And then what ends up happening is um, when the seed starts to like pop open and starts putting out roots, the roots are above the soil and then they dry out in like five seconds and then they go like, <laughs> so that's one problem I see. On the flip side with little seeds, um, when we put them, even though it's like just the tiniest bit in, um, they end up trying to take off and there's too much soil on top and then they just, so what I do with big seeds, 
is I use my thumb as kind of my general because like I don't know if you've ever heard like the thumb to like this point's about an inch just like kind of fast even though all of our thumbs are a little bit different um that's kind of the quick and easy trick so that's kind of I'll just kind of gauge it and then I'll drag my finger across get a whole bunch of seeds in now these ones are supposed to be about how much three feet apart we are not doing three feet apart this bed's not even that big I am going to jam pack this thing and we can always thin later if we want or if we don't want we will not. Who knows? I like challenging the system. So let's go. With my limited space, I'm putting these about each row of these about a foot apart. And then I'm placing the seeds maybe every six inches or so. I know it's going to end up with way more than I need, but that's okay because you know this this has been one of my challenge spots and I'd rather overseed and get something this year than underseed and you know be sad I mean the soil is super loose to make a row and yes I am putting some really close to the edge of the bed and I'm not worried about that because the roots can go the other side there's plenty of good soil over there ah maybe I'm doing more than maybe it's about every four inches I'm putting one It'll be interesting to see how the shade from the Ihise is gonna help or not help this plant. Okay, I'm gonna mix in jackpot just right at the end because I have it, so why not? Corn is done. I'm putting all my little seed packets in the row that I want to do them in so that I don't forget what I've done not done. So I don't know if you guys can see. We got rows space, so I got one, two, three, four, five rows. And I basically went this way. And then I put them every four inches. So hopefully this thing is crammed with beautiful, beautiful corn soon. Okay, let's go and we're gonna switch gears to tomato cuttings. Because before I put down more seeds, I wanna know how many cuttings I can go and grab. And I think it's more of interest to a lot of y'all because you're ready to start and maybe you have some tomatoes. And this technique you can use whether you have an established tomato plant or you went and bought starts, like you went to Lowe's, you went to Home Depot, you went to your local nursery and you bought a plant, you can still use the same technique. Doesn't matter whether it's in ground or not. You know, and get a friend, get a friend who has like a really good tomato plant and be like, can I just get a cutting? I feel like that's just like a low, it's not like a big ask. Cause most people are like, I gotta prune it anyway. Sure, have a cutting. Now here's the thing, when you're gonna go do cuttings, um, you need to be prepared to put them in the soil, whether it's in a little like transplant pot or you're going to be putting them directly into the ground. Like you need to be ready to do it right away. So this is not something like, I don't know, like a, like a plumeria, like you get the cutting, you can hang out with it for like a month and then like put it in the ground. Like these are kind of like, it's time, do it. So let's go looking for some cuttings and figure out what we want to take. So one of the ones that I want to take is this, 4th of July hybrid, uh, might've been a 4th of July hybrid, early harvest hybrid. It's this plant right here. So, cause I know I had grape tomatoes here and then this was the next one. And all the really good tomatoes that were like this four ounce size came off this plant. Now you can see the plant has started to look more woody. So you see that it's very brownish green. And I think a lot of people are only used to seeing the stems when they're just like green, green. So this doesn't mean the plant's dead because what really you're going to look for is new growth, right? So the furthest parts along it are where the new growth is. If you have, if you've got an established plant, this is one where six to 12 inches of stem, that's what you're looking for. And then you'll want to leave maybe a leaf or two. Because here's the thing, tomatoes everywhere along here, there's, you'll see these little hairs, it can grow roots. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and then we're gonna just put it in the dirt down here. <laughs> we're gonna take right here. So we've got a nice looking stem here. So what I'm generally looking for to say it's a nice looking stem is I don't wanna see a bunch of stressed out leaves. If the, if the stem's already stressed, you're not starting from a good spot. So what we want is to start with like a good six inches. Now, if you're like, my stem's not nice and straight like yours, Jacqueline, that actually might be better. I love using stems that are kind of like curved like that because what I'll do is I put this section underground. Well, here, let me just trim this away so you can actually see it. 
So first thing you're gonna do, take off all the le extra leaves down here. So when I see stuff like this, I don't want any flowers. And what I tend to do is get rid of everything but like the last leaf, couple leaves. And here's the thing, you will see these leaves look stressed and potentially die once you put them in the ground. And that's okay. What you're looking for is, do you get new growth? If you got new growth, plant's happy. It's ready to put more new growth on. It's not struggling with this. And as soon as you see like a few more leaves, you can just get rid of the ones that look like blah. So if you're sitting here going like, mine doesn't look all straight like yours, Jacqueline, that's okay. Actually, I like them better when they're like this because then you can stick all of this in the ground, giving it the most surface area to start roots from, most places to start roots from, right? And then the plant can go. When you stick it up and down, you're gonna wanna go really deep. So you want at least three inches in the ground. So that's why I always say six to 12 inches because three inches, that's three inches, right? In the ground, three inches above. So we'll take this section right here. And we're just gonna stick this in the ground. I'm not gonna do pots with these ones because I wanna try to save my pots for as much seed starting as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this where the cherry tomato is. So you can see I've got a little bit of a curve. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this whole section and I'm gonna shove this in like this. And you can see the little teensiest, tiniest leaves sticking up. And that's my place. Good, good, it's pretty easy. So we need to make a couple more of these because why? Now, can you use maybe one of these stems? Mm, maybe. Thing is, is if you look at them really close, there's not as much of the fuzzies. So I would not guarantee that just like a stem like this with the leaves on it would do anything. But you know what? Let's try it. We're just gonna shove it right here. And we're just gonna take off all these extra leaves. We shoved it in the ground. We'll see what happens. If you've done that before and it worked, let us know. If you tried it before and it didn't work, let us know. We're a learning group. All right, so I still have, where's my stem? I had more left. Oh, okay, here we go. So we're gonna take some of this and we're gonna put it on the other side that's not as sunny. And hope that we can get some of those nice four ounces over here too. And since I lost the entirety of my grape tomatoes, I need something over here. Now, I'm cutting off these stems because this is a pretty big stem. See these? I can use this too. So this could be used. I just need to trim off this material. Yeah. Ta-da! And we're gonna put it right I am shoving it very deep into the ground as far as I can. You see, right here, sweep. And um, yeah, just trying to make it happen. We'll try to make as many happen as possible. Probably most won't, that's okay. Didn't cost us anything. And by the time we realize these have died, guess what? The plant will have put on new growth, which is what we want. So we're gonna take some of this stem and we're gonna put it on the other trellis where we get some better sun and we'll be happy. Happy thoughts. I think the question is, is how many tomato plants am I trying to get to? Because this trellis has a lot going on on it. Ah, I got loofahs, I got pumpkins, I got black beans, I got Everglades tomatoes going nutty over here. And I just got two sticks. You know what? We're gonna see what happens with these. Because honestly, I just need more tomatoes. Oh, I actually have one fruit and then die on me so I just shoved the seeds right there but there we go there's a stick stick in the ground I'm gonna go put this stick in the ground on the other side and we'll see if any of these grow so I'm gonna do it on the second post back on both trellises on the front and there we go deeper there you go we'll see what happens so while I have done this technique many times the first way I showed you I have not done it like the way I just showed you <laughs> with the sticking and the stick in the ground and seeing what will happen. So we're gonna let that one go. So we've got 4th of July, 4th of, or whatever these are, early mids, 
So we got one, two. I need to put another Everglades tomato there because that place completely died. And luckily I've got a lot of Everglades tomatoes left. Parker Whopper one. Oh, this is the one I showed you guys in another video. You know what, we're gonna take this one. I'm gonna put this one where the other Everglades used to be. I'm gonna try this one up front. Sometimes the plant's okay. And you just need to pick a different location. So I do like to mix and match and move stuff around because different locations, different things. Because my original theory was put Everglades tomatoes on the south side because um, they were the ones that were most likely to be able to take the spring heat. That was my theory. And so that is why I did what I did. But now, you know, we're going into fall, which is a little different. So why not try out some different things? So we're gonna, I left that stem really, really, really long. So we're gonna have that there and we'll see how that one does. And hopefully, hopefully good things. Okay, so this is the Whopper. This one is actually one that has a large, I think this is like an eight ounce, eight to 12 ounce tomato. So this is the one that I theorize we will not get a good yield from. But that's okay. That's why we try things. I'm not putting my whole trellis to it, but I am gonna put a little bit of space to it and we'll see how it goes. Oh, I wanted to grab some lemon boys. Ah. Okay, I do know I wanna grab some lemon boy cuttings because that one did decent and it was really fun when we were making salsa to have a mix of the red and the yellow. And Puerto Rican black beans like, I shall take over all of you. One, one plant to rule them all. Let's see what we can make of this. Ooh, sad. So the technique works. The healthier the stem, the better this, this will work. Um, that's all I've got to say about that. You want healthy stuff. This looks terrible, but you know what? I do want Lemon Boy and we will attempt to make this one work. Because it took me five seconds to do it. So, okay, here we go. <gasps> Weed, how'd you get here? You hid. this way. Right? We talked about this technique. Da, 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 da. Just gonna go put this in my wee bin. Not gonna stress about the fact that it's already put on a bajillion seeds and probably dropped a bunch already. All right, well, we gotta keep this moving because it's getting hot, 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 hot. Come on, baby. Shake that conga. Do, 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 do. Carrots and beans. So I, I'm gonna leave the cabbages in here because I don't wanna just re-disturb the soil in case there's any seeds on top from other plants. So I'm just gonna put these seeds in and then once stuff starts to take off, we will just, we'll just roll with that. So I am not adding any soil. I'm not adding any amendments, just putting in seeds, lots and lots of seeds. So, but look at this, even the cabbage starts, is starting to bounce back. Everybody's getting a little bit happier right now. It's a better time of year, huh? Carrots are teeny tiny seeds. These are ones that I like to just kind of put on the top layer and then cover up a little bit. So that's what we will do. So let's do that. So these ones want to be spaced. So they want you to space the carrots three inches apart, but each like column, 15 inches apart. So kind of like what I did with the corn, we're going to do maybe every six inches. <laughs> So I have like, oh, this is the amount of beets I have left and I'm just gonna use them all up. I might regret that once I hit winter that I didn't save any, but whatever, I'll go try to pick some up later. I am gonna try to use a little bit more of Southern exposure to get some like more Southern variety, see if I can get a good increase in my yields come winter time down the middle. Cause the middle's kind of open. I had thrown a um, <laughs> banana, I thrown a banana tree plant here in the middle. Um, cause bananas are really full of nitrogen and phosphorus and other minerals, but mostly nitrogen and phosphorus. So, and usually when we are talking your NKP, you know, that's a big part of it. So it's free. It's here already. They kind of suck a lot of nutrients from my compost bin anyways. Compost bin, I never feel like I got any compost to throw down. So I figure I'll just start using all the banana stalks that suck up most of my compost anyways. 
Yay, banana circles. So I think I'm just gonna go down the middle. Yeah, that way I can make it easy for me later. So these are all, all the carrots are this way and then we'll just go this way with the, with the beets. Okay. All right, that bed's done. Now I gotta figure out this spinach thing because I was gonna put the spinach in that bed now. So my plan, my game plan is sweet potatoes here through the fall and at the end of the fall when these get harvested, all this comes out, put in some like freshen up the soil and I'm gonna convert this to a strawberry bed. So that's the game plan for that one. Hopefully I actually can remember my plan and actually execute it because that I feel like was a really good idea because I was like, hey, that's about, the sweet potatoes should be done right as it should be strawberry season. So I feel like that's a big win for us. So, ugh, let me see if I can just get these vines out really fast. I wouldn't have expected any real tuber growth at this point. They haven't been in very long. But like, what is this? No idea. And a couple of weeds. And I point the sweet potatoes up. But you can see like having sweet potatoes in for just like a month, really good at suppressing your weeds and uh, keeping, keeping nutrition in your soil. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That one I can tell is trying to do something. There we go. And if this ends up taking off after I'm done with the spinach, that's okay. I don't really mind that because we'll eat the sweet potatoes. Yes, I just threw these on top of it. <laughs> okay. Ben's gonna be like, what did you do? Why are you doing that? So, like, I changed my mind, Ben. Uh-oh. Mm. Oh! Oh! It's Ginger! I threw the ginger in. Dang it. Go back. Wait, the other one. I just smelled it and I was like, oh, what did I just do with it? Oh, dang it. The ginger that I thought didn't do anything. I remember, who was it? Mary, Maria, I think was like, it usually takes a month. And I just smelled the one and I was like, oh, what is that? I thought it was just one of the grass weeds that gets, comes in here. It's, oh, this is ginger too. Yep, that's ginger. Such a ding dong. I totally, is this ginger? No, that's not ginger. Oh, I totally, totally, totally forgot that I had planted ginger in here. Totally forgotten. Well, I had another little one in here. All right, well, whatever. The ginger's there. It's gonna take forever to grow anyways. Spinach time. Oh, man. Don't you? Love, hate that, that you forget a plant and then you're like, oh, look, it's actually doing something finally. Yeah. So, all right, these are a half inch for spinach for depth, which basically right below surface, but that's okay. So we got ginger. We're gonna leave the ginger right in the middle. And what I'm gonna do, these are all just sunflower sticks. Um, we'll just do spinach on either side of the ginger. Cause these ones wanna be six inches about a foot apart or something like that. Okay, so we can get one row. You know what, we'll go in between the gingers. It says it's a 40 day crop, which every crop that tells me 35, 40 days, it never is for me, but whatever. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna, we're gonna do a row of spinach right here. We'll do one in the middle with our ginger. I will not pull. And then we'll do one on the far side over here. And there we go. So I'm not doing what I did with my lettuce last year, which was a mistake, which is I just sprinkled it all through the bed. And because it wasn't organized in any way, it just ended up being a mess to clean up later versus if I had consciously decided on doing rows, I would have had a sense of where to like, um, not prune, that's not the word. Um, basically get rid of some of the babies so that 
you know, they were following a pattern, but because they were all over the place, it was kind of like a lot of thought process on when I should thin, thin that's what I'm looking for, thin out plants because there'd be one here and then there'd be one here. And it's like, oh, what maximizes the space? And while that's a fun brain game on some days, some days you're just like, I just need an, I don't need to think that hard. Spinach bed, done. We'll let sprinklers and rain and all that other good stuff hit it. I will. What I do after I plant seeds is I try to, um, as much do it near the rainy season. I think we're supposed to get rain later today. Oh, I'm melting. <laughs> I see the clouds starting to form, but um, especially when there's like new starts and seeds like this in the garden, I run my sprinklers three times a week to make sure nothing gets too dehydrated. And sometimes we'll do just like an extra time in the first couple weeks, just to like allow everything to get established. Once it's established, you only need two, maybe three times a week. Um, and if it's raining every day, you don't need it at all. But you know, um, just because when they, they've got little roots, it doesn't take much drying of that top soil for it to be like, Bleh. spinach, carrots and beets, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes will convert as we head to the end of fall into strawberries. I will have to figure out how to propagate strawberries. Never done that before, but going to do that. All right, so. Let me look at my little row of plants. I think we're doing really good. So now we are gonna switch. Oh, I need, one thing I need to do today before, like if I run out of time, is I need to get this one plant in the ground. I have two plants, but I have no idea where I'm putting the second plant. So um, my friends gave me a cayenne pepper plant and they gave me sugar cane. Um, so the cayenne, what I'm going to do is put it with my other peppers because I think one of the jalapenos or something died. So it's a perfect spot for it. It'll mix in. <laughs> it's already got peppers on it. Can I show you guys? It's already got little peppers on it. And I wanted to see how much of a bite actual like cayenne peppers have. So I tried one. I was like, oh, it's like an ahise. It's not bad at all. So I tried another green one that was a little bit bigger. So I tried first like one that was like this big. And then I tried one that was like this big and that one after I was done chewing it I was like oh that maybe wasn't the greatest of ideas and for hours later I felt the burn in my stomach which means you know they're spicy so um they said very good flavoring um you know because you just we use cayenne pe peppers and lots of stuff so I need to get this in the garden the sugar cane I am a bit stumped at the moment where to put it I'm thinking somewhere in the backyard, but cutting through the grass always sucks. And then if I, I've got some sort of grass problem back there, um, a whole stretch of grass died, which I turned to Ben the other day and I was like, I did not want to convert this backyard yet, but I feel like because all the grass has just suddenly died back here, it's like a sign. I don't feel like a sign. It looks bad. And there is some sort of critter coming because whatever pest is killing the grass, it's coming and digging up with tons of holes. And we just got a new dog. <laughs> We rescued a third poodle and um, from the same Florida poodle rescue that our other two dogs came from. And she's a standard poodle. And she's, um, unlike my two guys, Teddy and Harper, who are very, very old, she's not. She was a rescue from a puppy mill. She was a puppy mill mama. She's only like two. And she, and her and I go on runs every day, but her running around on the dead grass that has already been torn up by another animal, it's like just going to make it so that grass is really going to struggle to come back. So I was just like, man, do I need to convert this? But I don't want to have mulch with running around with Miss Shiloh. Shiloh's her name. But because sugarcane, if you don't know, it's a grass. Things that hurt grass, just like with my corn, could potentially kill that. So I'm not really sure where to put this thing right now. But then the other day, I just said to Ben, I said, might as well just put it somewhere that will be fine. I can always move it eight, eight later because everything I looked online, it says it's like really easy to propagate. So kind of like bananas, if I don't like it there and I try to transplant it and it dies, I can just like propagate it really fast. So let's get this pepper. So long story short, let's move this pepper <laughs> and get it in the ground so that I can continue to challenge my intestines as I randomly go like, hey, you know what, just eat one today. Why not? But aren't they so cute? Oh, it's like Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights. I don't know if you guys know that. I love Christmas lights. Hence the reason we leave them on our arches all year round. So, so plants that look, I love bird pepper. I love this one because they look like Christmas lights. So this is gonna be its new little home. And this little okra, I think I actually, I smooshed it the other day. 
but this Cajun pepper is like here and it's tiny. And so I'm gonna put this, let's turn you around. I think right here, there's a nice sized space for it. So we're gonna do that. Here's my new little cayenne, my little Christmas tree. Come on, sunshine mimosa, get out of the way. Let's see. I know they just, I, they just gave this to me. So hopefully it doesn't have too big of a root ball. All right, let's see if I can just shove this in. Put lots of happy soil around. Let's move on to seed starting. So a thing I do when starting seeds is I do not leave them anywhere, one, in Florida, never a full sun location. That one is way too hot for a mature plant. In Florida, for anything that's like your temperate climate stuff, your tomatoes, your peppers, anything that's like eight hours, psh, no. Um, so remember Florida, four to six hours is full sun. But with seeds, I really <laughs> protect them. So they tend to stay in my food forest, down in little trays by my bananas and my mulberries because then they can get rain in case I forget. Um, my hose is here so I can, you know, help them out. Um, but they get a lot more protection. Okay, so what we're gonna do, when it comes to seed starting, I like to use little trays like this. Um, basically, I bought some sort of plant. I just keep them. The next thing you wanna do is you want to use potting soil. Regular in-ground soil has a lot more sand in it and so drains faster. And when it comes to starting stuff in small containers, drainage is always a big, big, big issue because they, they just, they can, the water evaporates quickly and they drain really fast. So what I do is I always fill them up first before anything with seeds. And I just fill them up to the top. And when I am done filling them, I will next go and soak them and get all the soil nice and moist. Why? Because if you don't, it's called, what is it, hydrophobic, the soil, which means it's scared of water. But that's not really what it means. It means that the water is having trouble absorbing. Um, kind of think of like a sponge in your kitchen. You know when it's like gotten totally dry, you haven't used it in like a day or two, right? It's totally dry. When you first let water hit it, it doesn't absorb the water right away. It kind of just splashes all off of it. And then it takes a second and then finally it'll start to, and then very quickly, like it kind of exponentially, it starts to like expand with water. Um, same idea with, with soil. If it's totally, totally dry, it will have, it will take longer to get it going. Same, um, but once it has water in it, you don't have to apply as much to get it going. So that's kind of what happens. So what I like to do is put moist soil in or put soil in, then uh, add water and then I go and put seeds. So that's what we're going to do now. So I like to use like a mist setting and just give it a gentle mist. This is a good time to rinse off your hands. And the way you'll know you've got enough moisture in here is you stick your finger in and dig down and look and see if the soil at the bottom is dry or not. If it's dry, then you need to keep putting water. If it's not dry, then you're cool. You're good to go. And this is good to go. So let's go grab our seed packets and decide what do we want to put where. So here's the thing with using in-ground soil. It's got a lot of sand in it and it's got a lot of mulch chips in it, which is great when you're doing in-ground. Um, it's not great when you do little pot things because that big old mulch is really hard for seeds to compete against, especially things like now pumpkin, a bean can push that mulch out of the way. Tomatoes, peppers, those little tiny delicate little seedlings. Mm -mm. They'll come up and then go and get smooshed. Now the big thing with the little seeds too, you need to keep that top level moist. If you do not, they will die very, very, very quickly. Where like beans and the corns and the stuff like that, that they have, um, they start deeper so that they can set roots deeper, which means they have access to water and nutrition that's deeper and less accessible to other plants. The little seeds, they're, they grow faster. Like a lettuce grows really fast, spinach will grow really fast, but it is easy to kind of kill them because their roots tend to be only in that first six inches. And for the first couple weeks, they're really vulnerable. So checking them every day, and especially depending on your location, um, checking them twice a day, you know, before you go to work, after work. So like in the location, when I put them over here, they do get sun um, in the morning as it comes over the house. But then as it comes to the west, the bananas, the mulberry, all that, 
block it from getting any western light so they're in shade in the hottest parts of the day so that just slows down evaporation which is just the water coming up and off the soil now all of these are very tiny seeds basil is ridiculously small so really small means we're just putting it at the very top can you even see them they look like specks of dirt so we will do some basil and just two of these i am over sowing seeds why because I know that I have had trouble with basil before. And these are old seed packets. So that's basil. So then the next one we're gonna do, we'll do the early treat hybrid. This is the potentially one of my favorite types of tomatoes. Same idea, barely scratching the surface. That one. So we got basil, tomato, adhesive. So I will set that right here. Ooh, let's do them color order just so I can remember it. So we'll do large red cherry here, <laughs> then yellow pear. And what I'm committing to is I'm gonna do a better job of checking on all my seeds every day for the next two weeks to make sure these do not dry out and I do not lose them like I did another plant recently, which I will not tell you what it was, but it rhymes with schmilkweed. And I lost it because I just, I was like, oh, it's summer. Nature will provide. And all those little starts took off. And then all those little starts just died on me. Ooh, honeycomb hybrid. Okay, so red, yellow, orange. This one has barely any seeds. So we will plant all of the seeds they gave us because it's like 10. So that's that. So red, yellow, orange. So we're only going to make two eggplants. All right. And then tomatillo in the last four, because I haven't grown tomatillo. Gosh, since like, I feel like 2020 was the last time I grew it. But we love making green salsa. We like literally buy tomatillos. I don't know why it hasn't been on my mind. So eggplant and tomatillo. It's getting hot. And I think we've done everything we said we were going to do. So we planted our corn. We got spinach going, carrots and beets going. Um, we pulled those, found out I had ginger, surprise. We transplanted our pepper. We made tomato cuttings. We started our seeds. I think we're good. So other than just monitoring everybody, that's kind of it for prep for fall for the next couple weeks. So you may say, what till then? Well, remember, we, we've we been getting rid of all the grass. I have a little bit left to get rid of, but I got a lot of stuff to go plant. So coming soon to a theater near you is gonna be a whole new Florida native plant landscape. So that's what I'm gonna be working on until my, my fall veggies start really getting, getting going. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.